year, right? Now we're going to continue so we can figure out next year's dates, right? So mm -hmm. the next new moon is on the 28th. This would be the beginning of month eight now because we're getting away from the seventh month. The seventh month is the last month where we have holidays, according to Yahoo's calendar. There's no more dates after the seventh month. There's no more holidays after the seventh month, according to the Torah. All right? So this next new moon, this is starting month eight. All right? Moving forward to the next month, looks for the next new moon. The 26th would be month number nine. Let's go to the next one. The next new moon is December 16, which would be uh, month 10. Next, month 11 is on January 24. Month 12 is on February 2020. I mean, February 23rd, 2020 is the 12th, the beginning of the 12th month. Next new moon after that is March 24th. That would be the first month of the new year. Why? Because we already determined that around March 16 is when we have equal day and equal night. That's when our, you know, that's when we have the equal day, equal night happening. And the equinox. Now, if happened. it happened before that, then we'd have a, another month, 13th month. Um, right. Like uh, I was, yep. Like I was saying before, like if we're in the 13th, if we're in the, if we're in the 12th month, which was what on January? No, uh, February. I'm sorry. Right. February. February 23rd. Right. Yep. February 23rd. If the spring equinox is not found between this new moon and this new moon, if there's no e if there's no equal day equal equal night happening between those two two uh two new moons, then that is the thirteenth month, yeah. and we need it. We need a thirteenth month because it recalculates everything and adjusts everything back and brings it all back together, because. Now, man. Yeah. And what I was what I was letting you know in the group know in the group text is that um I'll be honest, it, the 13th month idea, I don't see it in scripture. I don't have a good explanation for it, but here's what I will say. No matter what calendar you choose, whether it's the Enoch calendar, the the uh the Zadok calendar, whatever version of Enoch, the Jubilees calendar, no matter what calendar you choose, by my experience and my, my research, I was talking to my wife about this, and she, she brought this up, actually. Her observation was that all these calendars have intercalary days. Intercalary days are days that are added to the calendar to adjust it because seven days a week does not perfectly go into an entire year perfectly with the rotation of the sun and the moon and the stars. It doesn't happen. So there is a need for a number to recalculate the days together. Because you're never going to have seven, 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 seven all year long perfectly and then start a new year, seven, seven, seven. You're eventually going to be off. You're eventually going to be going backwards and you'll be having the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, like further, further into the winter or whatever. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's why I'm not going, I don't go by Enoch and Jubilees. I just, in this assembly, we don't, we don't honor those books as authoritative to tell us what the calendar is or, or, or particular doctrines, not in this assembly. Um, however, we do see that Yahuwah has his own intercalary day according to what we observe and what we see the equinox happens perfectly at the season that it needs to happen to in the springtime. It happens every time around that time. And that lets us, that lets us, you know, recalculate everything by default. And I like that. I like that. I don't have to, you know, add days to the beginning of the year because I don't see it in scripture. 
That's I confusion. Just, I, yeah, all I see in the book of Genesis is the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars. That's all I see. And it, and it makes more sense, common sense to me, too. I mean, Yahuwah is not an author of confusion. All you have to do is look up, pay attention of it, and he, his phases will tell you when these things happen. And, and don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The people with these, those other calendars do the same thing. Right. They, they, observe, they observe the sun and the moon, so they're doing that right, too. But what they're doing differently than us is they're making their adjustments yearly rather than making their adjustment uh, every three years or so. Because we go by, right, 360-something days a year, right, if we're going by a seven-day week. There's only but so many weeks in a, in a year, you know, about 54 weeks or so in a year. So if we keep going with that consistent number, no, matter of fact, let me be more specific. We're going by the moon for months, right? And so the moon doesn't perfectly rotate yearly a perfect number. It's off a little bit. So it's a little bit more. So it, you know, like we'll end up having um, Passover, like closer and closer into the winter instead of the spring, right? One year we'll have Passover in March. Next thing you know, we'll be having Passover in February. Next thing you know, we'll be having Passover in January if we don't use the equinox or the equal day, equal night sign that Yahuwah created in the heavens. I hope that makes sense. But that's a lot of sense to me now. Yeah. Last year it didn't make sense to me, but now it does. All right. So with that being said, let's start getting our dates for uh, next year's uh, holidays.